Jesus Christ. So this evening, once again, uh, we have got this wonderful opportunity to gather together in the presence of God to uh, worship the Lord and also to listen to the word of God from the book of Revelation, especially. And uh, now uh, Jacob is going to summarize the previous portions. Then after that, we will continue the study of eschatological events. Yes, Jacob. You can just summarize the previous portion now. All righty. So we talked about a lot yet, uh, last week, uh, specifically the sevenfold judgment in the Bible, uh, seven points. Um, we talked about the past, the judgment of the sin, Romans 8, 1 through 4. The past judgment, uh, we talked about the condemnation of sin, Jesus on the cross. Uh, the second point, self-judgment, 1 Corinthians 11, 31, the present judgment, and it happens in the conscious of our mind court of our conscious, excuse me. Uh, we talked about the judgment of believers, 2 Corinthians 5.10. We talked about the future judgment, the time of rewarding, Romans 14.10-12, 1 Corinthians 3.9-14. Fourth point we talked about was the judgment of, na uh, judgment of nations, Matthew 25.32. And then we talked about the future judgment, Joel 3.1-2. and 2. Uh, Fifth point, the judgment of angels, 2 Peter 2.4, Jude 1.6, the future judgment, the judgment on the sinned in send angels the proper dwelling which equals their body or hair being the jude one six and seven and then we asked the question can the angels do these kinds of sins since they are spirit beings without human body uh, matthew twenty two thirty. 30 talked about the final judgment the future judgment all the sinners and unbelievers both alive and dead the seven point judgment of jews daniel 12 1 the time of Jacob's trouble, Jeremiah 37, Revelation 7, 14. And then we ended with saying that the Jews must believe in Jesus, who is the Savior, Acts 4, 10 to 12. Oh, thank you, Jacob. God bless you. And actually, uh, uh, while we are studying about these things, you may have a question in your mind that uh, in the first class itself, Pastor Tall, we are going to study the book of Revelation and the eschatological events, right? Then you may be asking then why uh, a pastor is speaking about all these judgments and all the, about the hell or heaven, et cetera, okay? Uh, that may be your question. Let me, let me remind you one thing that you, you know that these all portions uh, are included in eschatology. These all portions are included in eschatology. Uh, uh, actually, uh, you know what is the meaning of the eschatology? I told you already in the pre, in the in the initial class. I think what is the, what what do you mean by the eschatology? What do you know about eschatology? What is the meaning of eschatology? Study of end times. Study of end times. Yeah, end times. Sorry. The study of the end times. Study of end times. Yeah, that's right. Okay, so that is the study about the events which will happen in the future, right? The events which will happen in the future. Okay, so that is called the eschatology. Um, and uh, so I can say that all these topics like the second coming of Jesus Christ, rapture of the church, death, and what happens after death, what actually is hell and heaven, and the sevenfold judgments in the Bible. All these topics are a part of eschatological studies, okay? And I already told you that we will be using a different method uh, to study the chapters from uh, 5 to 22 of the book of Revelation, right? Uh, by the way, I'm trying to answer the questions uh, which I'm getting from you people uh, through the text message or WhatsApp message and along with that we are trying to cover the eschatological portions also from the book of revelation so in the previous class we have been discussing about the sevenfold judgments in the bible the sevenfold judgments in the bible in order to answer the question that question was the jews after the death of jesus or after the resurrection of jesus if they don't believe in jesus do these people go to hell? Do these people go to hell? Uh, actually, unfortunately, we could not record the initial part of the uh, part of the last class. That means we missed the 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 talk on the 
first three judgments the first three judgments so now i will screen share those missed portions uh, here now because uh, these videos are uploaded in uh, our website otherwise the people uh, who watch our website may feel a discontinuity of the or, of the topic so uh, these are the, these are the seven fold judgments in in bible i already uh, uh, spoke about these things and uh, uh, we were unfortunately were not able to uh, record the first initial the three judgments so so only because of that i'm just giving uh, these things and uh, the first one is the judgment on sin second one is self judgment and the third one is judgment of believers fourth one is judgment of nations and the fifth one is judgment of angels sixth one was final judgment and the seventh one was judgment of jews and i told you uh, in the previous class itself that this uh, this order is not the chronological order this is happening in different different times but just i, I was trying to answer the question which uh, you one of you asked in the in the previous class and i already explained about the different aspects of these past present and future judgments i told you that there are past uh, judgment and present judgment and future judgments so i am not uh, going to talk about all those things again uh, by the way uh, i am very much uh, excited to hear uh, uh, from you just like the questions i will try my level best to clarify your questions and doubts time to time but uh, uh, still there are many doubts about which even the scholars could not make a conclusion so i think uh, we will try to understand the things with uh, our limited intellectual capacity as we uh, as we move on i mean now uh, here i got another question and the next question is the people those who are not at heard the gospel will they go to heaven that is the next question that i received through the message through the text message the people those who are not at heard the gospel will they go to heaven that is a question but before giving an answer for this question uh, we should be aware about one thing that the matter of going to heaven or hell will be decided by god only after the judgment okay so that decision comes from god and uh, i can say that the decision to whether a person is going to hell or that person is going to heaven that decision is coming from god and also that will happen that decision will take place only after the judgment only after the judgment till that time all the unbelieving people who died the unbelieving people who died will be in hades and believers who died will be in paradise until the time of second coming of jesus christ let me repeat that point till that time till the judgment time or till the uh, second coming of jesus christ all the unbelieving people who died will be in hades and believers who died will be in paradise until the time of second coming of jesus christ and we already studied those topics in in very detailed uh, 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 method so i am not going to talk about all those things again now the question is that this question is the people those who are not at heard the gospel will they go to heaven this is the question this is a question which is uh, which a, it, this is actually a common question you know usually the people are asking <clears throat> in every in every places in every churches and to answer this question we have to read a verse that is romans chapter 2 verses 16 to sorry verses 12 to 16 romans chapter uh 2 verses 6, 12 to 16 yeah uh yeah elsa if you are ready you can read that that verse then we will uh, uh get, we'll try to find out the answer from there for all who have sinned without the law will also perish without the law and all who have sinned under the law will be judged by the law for it is not for it is not the 
hear, hearers of the law who are righteous before God, but the, do but the doors of the law who will be justified. For when Gentiles who do, who do not have a law by nature do what law requires, they are a law to themselves, even though they do not, know, even though do not, even though they do not have a law. They show that the work of the law is written on their hearts, while their con con conscience also bears witness, and their conflicting thoughts accuse or even excuse them. On the day when, according to my gospel, God. God judges the secrets of man by Christ Jesus. Okay, I believe that uh, you, you just remember the question. The people, those who are not at heard the gospel, will they go to heaven? Okay, that means the, the, the unreached people. The unreached people, will they go to heaven? That is the question. So, we you know, uh, there are many tribal people uh, lives in some interior areas of the forest, okay? So they never heard about Jesus or gospel. They never heard about Jesus or gospel. Uh, there are some remote areas where if you try to go there and meet those people, uh, all of a sudden they see you, uh, they will try to get away from us because they are afraid of seeing the other people and they even count us as their enemies, okay? You know, what is the, what is the, uh, what is the, what is the main weapon of uh, uh, these tribals, anyone knows what is what is the main weapon of those tribals? The people, those who are living uh, in the interior part of area of the of the forest. Somebody says knife. Is it knife? Bow and arrow. Very good. Yeah, bow yeah. and arrow. Bow and arrow. Yeah, very good, very good, very good. Okay, and now somebody was saying knife. Spears. Knife. Spears are there. They have. And this is the... Yeah, Ambu Milim. <laughs> yeah, Ambu Milim. That is, that is we call uh, bow and arrow. So this Ambu Milim is the main weapon uh, of those people, those who are living uh, inside, the, inside the forest. That means they are called as the tribals. So they don't have a, uh, they don't have a gun or any other technological weapons to fight. So uh, sometimes uh, if they see you, if you're going there, uh, they may try to shoot us uh, with, the, with the, the bow and the arrow, okay? The ambum willow. So that means we cannot reach some of those tribal people with gospel. We cannot go there and we cannot reach there. At the same time, there are, there are many remote areas already uh, the gospel workers have reached, okay? Then, uh, you know, then I can, I can share with you from uh, my own experience. I'm trying to give you the answer for the question uh, from my, from my uh, experience, okay? So while we were working in Kerala, uh, you know, there is, there is a place called Attapadi in Palaka district of Kerala. Some, maybe some of you might have heard about that place. Uh, there are many tribal people living in the interior areas of Attapadi forest, okay? So while I was studying in the Bible college during the uh, vacation time, we used to visit those people to share the gospel. So even after the graduation also, many times I've been uh, to that area with, uh, with, a, with a Jeep. So uh, we used to fix the mic system on the top of the Jeep and uh, on the way loudly announcing the Bible verses and sharing gospel and sometimes uh, we used to show the Jesus film. I don't know how many of you uh, uh, watched that Jesus film. Uh, so we used to do that also in that area uh, in, a, in a big screen of the white cloth, big screen of the white cloth. Uh, I know the new generation here uh, may not understand what I'm speaking about, but this is the fact that which uh, we went through in those days, okay, when I was, I was uh, a young child. So, and we have been uh, uh, seen many times as we approach them that they used to run away from us. They used to run away from us or they don't want to meet us. And they are, uh, they are very much afraid of us, okay? But by God's grace, uh, there are many churches in those areas today. And even uh, there are some churches under the leadership of Pastor M.B. Matai. You may be knowing that person, Pastor M.B. Matai, my uncle, who preached in our church for the new year meeting, right? 
So uh, what I'm trying to say is, uh, as I try to answer your question, uh, it is true that there are, or there will be uh, many tribal people during the time of second coming of Jesus. They do not have any idea about Jesus. They never heard about the gospel. Then the question is, will those people go to heaven or will they go to hell? You know, we get the answer from these verses already Elsa read it, you know, from Romans chapter two, verses 12 to 16, okay? You just listen to that verse, you will get the answer from there. I'm not going to read uh, the first verses, maybe 12 or 13, but uh, I will start with uh, uh, verse 15. Yeah, verse 15, uh, yeah, sorry, for verse 14. For when Gentiles who do not have the law do instinctively the things of the law, these not having the law are a law to themselves. In that they show the work of the law written in their heart. The laws written in their hearts. That means the law of worshiping the living God that is written in their heart. Their conscience bearing witness and their thoughts alternately accusing or else defending them on the day when according to my gospel, God will judge the secrets of men through Jesus Christ. That means, what is the meaning of that? So these verses says that in themselves, God has given a conviction about God in themselves. That means th something is written even in the heart of those tribal people or those people, those who are unreached, there will be many people unreached. But here, this verse says that the, the law of God is already written inside. That means in, in their heart. So Jesus is going to judge these people with their conscience, with their conscience, because they have an idea about God in their heart. That is what we read from this verse. It's true that they have not heard the gospel yet. It's true that they haven't heard the gospel yet, but they also will have the judgment according to their own conscience. I think you got the point. You, they will also need to, need to face the judgment of God because our God is the, is the God of righteousness, okay? So God will judge every person according to their own conscience also. That means nobody is exempted from, from the judgment of God because God is the righteous judge, okay? So that is, means no punishment without judgment, no punishment without judgment. So before punishing a person, there will be a judgment and that judgment will be differing from person to person according to their situation, okay? So that's what we were discussing in the previous class that there are mainly seven judgments. The, the past one is there, the present judgment is there and the future judgments are coming. So this is what we have been lis listening in the previous class also. So after the judgment, God will decide whether a person should go to the eternal hell or to the eternal heaven. So I told you there is an eternal hell and there is an eternal heaven. So God will decide after the judgment. That means before the punishment, God will judge the people, different people, even God is going to judge the, the fallen angels and also God is going to judge um, uh, every person, the Jewish people and Gentile people and every person. So that will be happening in different times. But God will decide uh, after the judgment whether a person should go to the eternal hell or to the eternal heaven. And I hope uh, I could clarify that question now through these verses. And uh, still, if you have any, any question or, or any, any doubts on these portions, please feel free to text me. I will try to clarify that in the next class, amen, okay? So the other day, when I was explaining about uh, what happens to the body, soul, and the spirit of a person after the death, after, after the death, what happens to the body, soul, and the spirit of a person after the death, there had a question about what is the biblical concept about the body, soul, and the spirit? What is the biblical concept 
about the body, soul, and the spirit. Or in other way, you can, you can ask that question, how can we prove from the Bible that we are created with these three elements? How can we prove from the Bible that we are created with these three elements, that is body, soul, and the spirit? So let me try to clarify that question now, because uh, that portion also is, uh, is, is related to the eschatological studies, okay? So that means eschatological studies means what happens after the second coming of Jesus Christ or during the time of second coming of Jesus Christ or the things and the events which is going to happen in the future. So this question also is included in the eschatological studies. Okay, so uh, just before we start to uh, we uh, 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 start to find out the answer for that question. Uh, I have a two question. I have a cute question. Uh, that is, uh, can anyone find a Bible verse which tells about uh, we are made with mainly three elements like body, soul, and spirit? Can anyone find a Bible verse which? Uh, uh, tells us that we are made with mainly three elements like uh, body, soul, and the spirit. First Thessalonians 5.23. Yeah, uh, here I got another question. Uh, yeah, thank you, Jason, brother. That is, that is very correct. Now, another question I got, what is the difference between Hades and the eternal hell? So actually, uh, that is already... Uh, discussed and I, I just, uh, I was just, I've been talking about what are the differences between, or what are the compartments of the hell and the temporary hell and the, and the eternal hell. So if possible, we'll be discussing about that question later. Now we will come to this question. Okay. The, because that is already uh, discussed in the previous class. Okay. So uh, uh, the answer is first Thessalonians chapter five verse 23. Yes, Elsa, you can read that verse now, then we will move on. First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 23. Elsa, you're ready? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Chapter 5, verse. Okay. Now may the God of peace himself sanctify you completely and may your whole spirit and soul and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. You can see there the three elements of a person. Now may the God of peace himself sanctify you entirely and may your spirit and soul and body be preserved complete without blame at the coming of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. So this verse clearly says that men and women are composed of three parts or three elements like body, soul, and spirit. So this is known as the uh, uh, trichotomy. Okay, trichotomy is the is the name which is given for uh, uh, believing that a, a, a man and a, a, a woman uh, are composed of the three parts of, of uh, three elements, okay, like uh, body, soul, and the spirit. Uh, but actually, uh, in some other references, the word soul is used instead of spirit. And also, the word spirit is used instead of soul, okay? So which indicates the soul and the spirit are interrelated, okay? So in, in some other references, okay, we were talking about here, about the body, soul, and the spirit. At the same time, there are some other references which talks about the soul is used instead of spirit and spirit is used instead of soul. Okay, whatever it may be, uh, the meaning of that is soul is always uh, interrelated with the spirit. Okay, so we will, we will think about, I mean, a little later. Okay, now let us see the differences of each other. The differences of each other. The first one is the body the body. So we are talking on the basis of Bible and the references, okay? Okay, so the body uh, is our external part. The body is our external part and it is, the, it is the outer organ or outer frame of a person. It's the outer organ or outer frame of a person and it is possessing the world conscience it is possessing the world consciousness and that we may conduct the material world. 
So we are contacting or we are having a, a relation with this material world through our body, through our body. That means which includes both the flesh and the bones. Okay, so the body is include, included with the, uh, the flesh and the body and the bones. Okay, and a body is taken from the dust of the ground. A body is taken from the dust of the ground. That is what we read in Genesis chapter 2 verse 7. Genesis chapter 2 verse 7 says, Then the Lord God formed a man from the dust of the ground. From the dust of the ground. So that is mean. That is the meaning that I can say that we, the, our body is taken from the dust of the ground. Our body is taken from the dust of the ground. The, the, uh, the, you know, when God was creating man, the God formed a man from the dust of the ground. Again, in Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 7. Can you read that verse, uh, Elsa? Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 7. And the dust returns to the earth as it was, and the spirit returns to God who gave it. Okay, so what is that? Okay, it is written, the dust returns to the ground. That means the dust, that means the, the, the body, the flesh is coming out of the dust of the ground and it came from, okay? So it, it returns when we die, when we die and when we are buried, this flesh or this body will be returning to the ground and the spirit returns to God who gave it. The spirit returns to God who gave it. Okay, so that is the meaning of that. So this is the this is the small explanation about the body of a person from the biblical concept. And the second one is second element is the soul. And what is the soul? What is soul? Soul is our very self. Soul is our very self. And uh, uh, you can you can read those verses, then we will understand it in more. Matthew chapter sixteen, verse twenty six. Matthew chapter 16, verse 26, and Luke chapter 9, verse 25. Matthew chapter 16, verse 26. For what will it profit a man if he gains the whole world and forfeits his soul? Or what shall a man give in return for his soul? Okay, and Luke 9, 25. For what does it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses loses or forfeits himself? Uh, so these words, these verses are very familiar for everyone. Now, usually we use that verse <coughs> to, to speak to other people, you know. Uh, so from these verses, we understand the soul of a person is our very self. And in others, in some other translation, it says uh, uh, if he loses his life, or if a person loses himself, that is the word which is used in other translations, okay? So that is very clear that if a person loses his life, or if that person loses himself, then what is the gain for that person? That means the soul of a person is very important, and also it is the very self of a person, um, and, and another thing I can, I can just share with you that uh, anyway, soul is a medium between our spirit and our body, okay? Soul is standing in the, in the midst of the, or in the middle of the spirit and the body, and soul is the medium between our spirit and our body. So when our spirit and body want to speak something or to, uh, to, to assign something, so the mediator is the soul. Through soul, we are getting connected with the, the spirit is getting connected to the body and the body is getting connected to the uh, spirit. And we can call it as uh, our personality. So our personality also is known as the soul of a person. And uh, our soul perceives things in the psychological realm also. Uh, everything, you know, uh, we have a psychological uh, psychological uh, realm also and the soul is always perceives the things in that realm in that area with our uh, soul uh, 
we, we we used to think about something and we reason about something and we consider the things and we remember many things and we wonder many times and also we experience the emotions we experience with the soul we are experienced the emotions you know sometimes you are happy so happiness is there we love other people and we love god and we get sorrowful situations and we get anger we get relief sometimes and we get some compassion with our soul so every these all things are happening with our soul with our soul okay that may affect your body also and that may affect your spirit also okay for example when you are getting angry when you are getting angry you know when you go to when you go to go to the doctor your family doctor he i mean he or she will say that or oh, you your blood pressure is high because when you get that emotion of anger then what happens your know, that is that is affected by the body also okay so sometimes if you are sorrowful and if you are so sad then you your your body will be weak because that is the relation with the, the soul and the, and the body so these things are happening with our soul and we are able to resolve the issue sometimes when we are having some issues and we, when we are having some problems we are trying to uh, solve those problems with our soul and we are sometimes choosing something okay selecting something and uh, making some decisions making some decisions and everything happens with our soul with our soul okay so that is the that is the entire conception about the soul of a person now we will go to the third element of a person that is the spirit that is the spirit okay so what is the spirit of a person with the, the word of god we will think about that thing what the bible says about the spirit spirit is our innermost part and the inner organ okay spirit is the innermost part of a person and the inner organ of a person and that is possessing god's consciousness god's consciousness and also through which we are or through spirit we are able to contact god in worshiping god for example through the spirit we are contacting god when we are praying when we are worshiping everything happens through the through the spirit the spirit will encourage a person to worship god the spirit will encourage a person to go and sit in the presence of god and pray so always a believer should give more preference for the spirit okay for example read maybe two verses john chapter 4 verse 24 john chapter 4 verse 24 first god is spirit and those who worship him must worship in spirit and truth listen god is spirit and those who worship god should worship in truth and spirit okay so where comes the worship and how should we do the worship listen very carefully when we sing a song when we pray or when we preach everything should happen through the spirit because because we have a spirit and our spirit is always connected with god so we are supposed to worship god we are supposed to pray in the presence of god in spirit with the help of the spirit so when we sing a song do it with the power of the holy spirit amen so because we are worshiping god we are worshiping god we are praying to our almighty god again one more verse romans chapter 1 verse 9 romans chapter 1 verse 9 for god is my witness whom i serve with my spirit in the gospel of his son that without ceasing i mention you again you know this verse also saying that we have a close connection with our spirit towards god so when we do something spiritual thing spiritually that always our spirit must be uh, must be active and the spirit will help us to do all those spiritual things so this is this is the biblical uh, concept about the body 
soul and the spirit and i hope that question also is clarified i mean and uh, the next question also is related to this the next question is uh, what is the heaven or what is heaven and what are the compartments of heaven what is heaven and what are the compartments of heaven this is the next question and we are we are trying to uh, answer for those that question also now what is heaven and what are the compartments of heaven <clears throat> so as we try to find out the biblical explanation of the heaven and the compartments of heaven uh, let me remind you something that which we already discussed the other day you know i know that you are getting some doubts about when i speak that the compartments of heaven and the compartments of hell different compartments of heaven or different compartments of heaven or hell now you may be asking okay, why it is coming in that way so already we discussed about that about the hell one day and uh, i told you that we we assume uh, according to some of the references of the bible that there are some compartments in hell and also in heaven okay so we cannot uh, uh, completely we cannot say that okay okay god made this compartment this compartment this compartment it's not like that but it is there in the bible that this is a part and this is a part and that is the part of the hell and these are the different elements or different uh, levels or layers of heaven in that way okay so actually we already discussed about what happens to the body soul and the spirit of a person after the death okay and it was uh, it was it was on the basis of hebrews chapter 2 verse 14 and 15 and also revelation chapter 1 verse 18 see we already uh, discussed about that uh, what happens the, uh, to to the body soul and the spirit after a person is died okay and from these verses we understood the paradise was underneath the earth if you if you go to that those verses you will understand once the the paradise the paradise paradisa it was underneath the earth okay uh, till the till the time of crucifixion of jesus christ till the time of crucifixion of jesus christ that is what we uh, see that uh, jesus christ was saying uh, to to the to the uh, criminal or to the thief uh, uh, who was on the on the uh, cross with jesus christ while jesus christ was crucified okay so jesus said today you will be in paradise with me that means you know actually uh, even even after that also you know um we say that okay, uh, lazarus and the rich man after the death of lazarus and the rich man lazarus uh, uh, yeah rich man went to the uh, went to the uh what is that abbius abbius okay or, or you can call it as a yeah abbius yeah uh uh yadana stalam then uh the lazarus went to the bosom of abraham so i told you what is the meaning of the bosom of abraham also in those days in in the in that class okay so leave it so this is what we understand you know uh the the, the paradise uh was under near the earth till the time of the crucifixion of jesus christ and satan was holding the power of the death and hades but after his death jesus descended into into the lower parts of the earth and took the spirit of all the people he went to jesus christ after the after the resurrection he descended into the lower parts of the earth and took all the spirits of all the people those who died before the resurrection of jesus that means the spirit of the old testament saints the spirit of the old testament saints from that paradise from the under the paradise of underneath the earth and placed them in the paradise above placed them in the paradise above uh, to understand that issue uh, we have to read ephesians chapter 4 uh, verses uh, 8 to 10 efficiency chapter 4 verses 8 to 10 yeah therefore it says when he ascended on high he led a, a host of captives and he gave gifts to men in saying he ascended what does it mean but that he has also descended into the lower regions of the earth 
He who descended is the one who was also ascended far above all the heavens that he might fill all things. Listen very carefully that particular verse that after the resurrection of Jesus Christ, he ascended on high. He led captive a host of captives and gave gifts to men. Now this expression, he ascended, the expression that which is written here, he ascended. What does it mean? Except that he also had descended into the lower parts of the earth. Listen very carefully that verse. He also descended into the lower parts of the earth. He who descended is himself also he who ascended for above all the heavens so that he might fill all things. So according to this verse, and also according to uh, the, the Hebrews chapter 2, verse 14 and 15, and Revelation chapter 1, verse 18, I personally believe the paradise below is totally empty now, because after the resurrection of Jesus Christ, the spirit of the believers, the spirit of the believers means the spirit of the Old Testament saints, Old Testament saints, okay, it was directly uh, they were directly going to the paradise above, okay? And this is the present paradise where, where uh, the dead believers are waiting for their resurrection, okay? Uh, for their resurrection, okay? So, and now, uh, um, who can say that uh, when will the resurrection of dead will happen? That means dead believers. When... Agree. When will the resurrection of dead believers happen? Dead believers already died. The believers already died. When it is going to happen? Second coming of Jesus. Very good. So at the second coming of Jesus Christ or at the same time, two things are happening. Second coming of Jesus Christ is happening. At the same time, the rapture of the church will happen. So during the time of the rapture of the church, the, the dead believers will be resurrected from the death, from the death. Okay, that is what we understand from the, from the verse. Okay, uh, you know, how many heavens are mentioned? That is the question, okay? So we, we are going to talk about the heaven and also the, the compartments of the heaven. Okay, so can I know that, uh, what, what is your understanding about how many heavens are mentioned in the Bible? How many? Men, men, how many levels are there? How many? There are seven levels, Pastor. Okay. So only one answer? Anyone? Any other three. answer? Three. Sorry, three. Okay. Three, seven, then. Twenty. <laughs> okay. So someone said seven. Someone said three, nobody said one. Why can't we say that it is one? Why nobody said one, the answer one. Somebody said seven and someone said uh, three. Let, let, let us read one verse, Genesis chapter one, verse one. Genesis chapter one, verse one. In the beginning, God created heavens and the earth. It is very by hearted, by hearted verse for everyone, is right? In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. That means here it is used not the singular word, but it is plural. Okay, it is not heaven, but it is written heavens. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Okay. In Malayalam, actually, the Adil Devu Magashum Pumi Sustitu Atra Matra Mulu. But in, in English and in other uh, root languages, it is written heavens. Okay. So one thing is sure that there are more than one heaven. More than one heavens. Or there are many layers or levels of heaven. There are many levels or layers of heaven. Okay. So, you know, mainly uh, the Hinduism or uh, the, the Islam 
religion and Babylonian religion, all those people believes in seven heavens. Okay, they believe that there are seven heavens. Okay, they believe the, the Hinduism and also the Islam people or the Babylonian religion, they believe in seven heavens, but in, in, in different levels, in different levels, especially, you know, the, the ancient Babylonians uh, 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 believed that the seven heavens are associated with uh, uh, the moon, Mercury, uh, what is that, uh, Venus and Mars and the sun, Jupiter and the uh, Saturn and all those things, okay? So that is the belief of that, okay, there are seven, uh, seven heavens according to the Babylonian religion and the Hindu religion is differently thinking about the seven heavens and at the same, same time, Islam religion is uh, uh, believing in, in some kind of different uh, uh, type of seven uh, heavens, but they believe in seven heavens are there. But in Christianity, Bible gives us some ideas about the three levels or three layers of heaven. So in, in Bible, uh, about the seven heavens, it is nothing is written. Uh, I think there is no mentioning about the seven uh, heavens in Bible, but there are uh, some of the verses which we can prove that there are three layers or three, three heavens or three levels of heavens in, uh, uh, mentioned in Bible. So let us read uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 2. 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 2. I know a man in Christ who 14 years ago was caught up to the third heaven, whether in the body or out of the body, I do not know. God knows. Yes. Okay. So here actually, Apostle Paul is speaking about himself. Okay. So you can see the experience of Apostle Paul when, while he was Saul, he was known as Saul before. And then after, after the <clears throat> conversion, uh, uh, it is not changed the name, but he was known as the Paul. Then before his conversion, something happened on that day. That uh, experience of Paul is written in book of Acts. So in, in, on the basis of that, he is speaking here in 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 2, that he speaks about himself, that he was taken up to the third heaven, right? He was taken up to the third heaven, okay? And uh, uh, especially uh, he was saying that, okay, uh, I know one thing that I know how, how such a man, okay, sorry, uh, I know a man in Christ who 14 years ago, whether in the body, I do not know, or out of the body, I do not know, God knows such a man was caught up or taken up to the third heaven. Listen, that, that particular verse, okay? So uh, it may be counted as one heaven, but three realms or three rebels of heaven. Okay, only one heaven, but there are there are three realms, or there are three layers, or there are three levels of heaven. So let us read one more verse. That is Psalms uh, 33, verse six. Psalms 33, verse six. By the word of the Lord the heavens were made, and by the breath of His mouth all their host. Okay, what is that? By the word of the Lord the heavens were made. Okay, and by the breath of his mouth, all their host. Okay, so then uh, we understand from these verses that at least there are three realms of so three heavens are there. That means three layers of heavens are recorded in Bible up to three, up to three. I don't know more than that. Anything is written or anything is mentioned in Bible, but I have seen in my reading that only up to three uh, heavens, okay? And uh, uh, then uh, now let us let us see which are the three levels or three layers of heaven mentioned in Bible. Okay, the three levels of heavens mentioned in Bible. The first one is, um, yeah, the immediate atmosphere. The immediate atmosphere. Yeah, I know that you may have some doubt or questions regarding all these things, but uh, you can just text to me, no problem. I will try to give you the doubt and the, the, the clarification for your questions in the uh, next class, okay? You can uh, just feel free to uh, give me the text me the questions and the doubts, okay? We will try to clarify those questions regarding all these things, okay? So the first part or the first level or first layer of the heaven 
is the immediate atmosphere, the immediate atmosphere. That means the firmament or the atmosphere of the earth, which is the immediate sky. You know, our uh, teenagers, you may be knowing something about these three heavens or three levels of the mm, heavens because I told you once when I was taking the classes for you. Okay, so listen. So the firmament or the atmosphere of the earth, which is the immediate sky, the immediate sky that you can, you can, you can see that it is very visible where we see the birds of the heaven and also the eagles of heaven. Okay, it is written in that verses. Let us read the Genesis chapter two, verse 19. Genesis chapter two, verse 19. Yeah. Now out of the ground, the Lord God had formed every beast of the field and every bird of the heavens and brought them to the man to see what he would call them. And, yes. what, and Thank whatever. You. Thank you, Elsa. It is written, the birds of the heaven, birds of the heaven. Okay, so that is very visible. The birds are flying there. Okay, and one more verse, maybe maybe Psalm number eight, verse eight. Psalm number eight, verse eight. There are many verses written there. You can you can just uh, uh, go home and uh, you read that verses later. Now we don't have uh, enough time to read all those verses, but we are just reading maybe uh, two or three verses. Okay, yeah, Psalm eight, eight. The birds of the heavens and the fish of the sea, whatever passes along the paths of the seas. One more verse. Lamentation chapter 4, verse 90. Lamentation chapter 4, verse 90. Elsa, you are so quick to take the verses and read. Um, okay. Lamentations chapter four, verse 19. Yes. Our pursuers were swifter than the eagles in the heavens. They chased us on the mountains. They lay in the wait for us mm. in the wilderness. Okay, that word speaks about the eagles in the heaven, eagles in the heaven. So we can understand that, you know, you can see the birds and the eagles and uh, all those things, uh, I mean, in this first layer, that means the immediate atmosphere of the earth. It is, it is our atmosphere that surrounds the, Earth. Okay, so the first heaven consists of the cloud. The cloud is there, and the atmosphere is there, and the visible heaven above us. So when we stand in the earth, we see the cloud, and we see the birds, and we see the eagles, and we see the the, the first atmosphere, or first layer of the heaven. Okay, so about that, uh, Bible again speaks about in 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 Psalm number seventy eight also in Psalm number seventy eight verses. 23 and 24. Psalm number 78, 23 and 20, 24. Yet he commanded the skies above and the opened the doors of the heaven. He rained down on them manna to eat and gave them grain of heaven of heaven. What we read there, it was it, it, it was the from that first layer of heaven, God provided food and rain for the people of Israel. Okay, for the people of Israel. When People of Israel were uh, traveling from Egypt uh, to Canaan. We understand that from that layer, from that area, from the first layer of heaven, God was providing the food and rain for the people of Israel. And also, uh, when you read uh, Genesis chapter 7, uh, verses 11 and 12, Genesis chapter 7, verses 11 and 12. In the six in the six hundredth year of Noah's life, in the second month, on the seventeenth day of the month, on the on that day, all fountains of the great deep burst forth, and the windows of the heavens were opened, and the rain fell upon the earth forty days and forty nights. Very good. You know what is that? What is that? We read that during the time of the flood of Noah. Okay, during the time of uh, uh, Noah, we understand uh, that there was a, there was a there was a huge flood. So it says that the, the windows of heaven were opened. The windows of heaven were opened and the, and the rain was on the earth for 40 days and 40 nights. The rain, okay? That means it was from this first level of the level, the flood came upon the earth. The flood came upon the earth from the first level or first layer of the heaven. Okay, so it was coming further. I think it is it is it is it is clear about the first level of heaven on the basis of uh, these uh, references. Okay, and uh, that is very clear that uh, 
uh, this is the understanding about the first layer of the heaven from these verses. And we will go to the second uh, layer, the second layer of the uh, heaven, that is the outer space, that is the outer space. The second layer or the second level, uh, level of the heaven, which is mentioned in, in Bible, in different verses, it is uh, uh, outer space, the outer space. We will read uh, Jeremiah chapter 8, verse 2, and Matthew chapter 24, verse 29. Jeremiah chapter 8, verse 2. And they shall be spread out before the sun and the moon and all the host of heaven, which they have loved and served, which they have gone after, and which they have sought and worshipped. And they shall not be gathered or buried. They shall be as dung on the surface on, of the ground. It is written, they will spread them out to the sun, the moon, and to all the host of heaven. Okay, so listen, and Matthew chapter 24, 29 also. Matthew 24, 29. Immediately, immediately after the tribulation of those days, the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give its light and the stars will fall from heaven and the powers of heavens will be shaken. You, you feel that uh, we are going very fast? No problem. I think you are understanding all these points because already it is there in the, in the screen. In the, I'm, I'm, I'm sharing the screen also, so it is very easy to understand. And uh, not only that, uh, we have no time because we have to go back to the Book of Revelation, chapter 5. We have to start from there. Okay, again, uh, we are a little fast to, to complete that portion. Okay, so uh, the, the second uh, second one, the second uh, level or second layer of the, of the heaven uh, is known as the outer space. And in Jeremiah, chapter 8, verse 2, and also in Matthew, chapter 24, verse 29, we understand that the second layer is the, is the, is the, starry, the starry heaven. Okay, that is a starry heaven or where our atmosphere ends. So the, the first atmosphere will end, then that one is known, the next one is known as the outer space. Okay, so we can call it as a as the uh, uh, celestial heaven. You can call also it as a celestial heaven. And this is the heaven in which the sun, moon, and the stars are fixed in the orbit. Okay. There are sun, there are sun, moon, and the stars are there fixed on the orbit. So that space is known as the outer space, and that is the second layer or second level of the heaven that we understand from this. And uh, again, one more verse: Psalm number nineteen, verse one. Psalm number nineteen, verse one. The heavens declare the glory of God, and the sky pro above proclaims His handiwork. Okay, the heavens are telling of the glory of God and their expanse is declaring the work of his hands. Okay, so that also is, you can, you can just, I mean, uh, conclude in that way that everything in that second layer is, I mean, praising God or they, uh, they declare the glory of God. That means the sun and the moon and the stars and everything in the second layer that is, I mean, uh, just uh, praising God or glorifying the name of God, declaring the glory of God. That means declaring the glory of God means when you see that, okay, the star and the, uh, uh, the star and the moon and the sun, then you also, we also will praise God because God created all these things in the universe accordingly, okay? We cannot understand the meaning and the, the unlimited power and the greatness of God when we see the creation of God. Okay, so when we see the sun, when we see the moon, when we see the stars, we are glorifying God. We are glorifying God and the firmament shows his handiwork. Okay, so that is what we understand from that portion. That means the second level of the, of the heaven. And the third level uh, is, uh, the third level is the heaven of heavens. The heaven of heavens. Uh, uh, in Malayalam, it is actually Sorgadi Sorgam. Sorgadi Sorgam. Sorgatin Mugalil Sorgangal Kumulil Mugalil Sorgam. So, heaven of heavens. Okay. I, I'll explain that, the meaning of that word. The heavens 
the heaven of heavens. Yeah. So uh, if you read uh, Deuteronomy chapter 10, verse 14, and 1 Kings chapter 8, verse 27, and Psalm number 115, verse 16, you will understand what is the third and the and the uh, the the level of the heaven. Okay, so uh, we will try to read those verses and we will uh, explain something out of that. Deuteronomy chapter ten, verse forty. Behold, to the Lord your God belong heaven and the heaven of heavens, the earth with all that is in it. Okay, and First uh, King chapter eight, verse twenty-seven. First King chapter eight. Verse 27. But will God indeed dwell on the earth? Behold, heaven and the highest heaven cannot contain you, how much less this house that I have built. Okay, and again, Psalm number 115, verse 16. The heavens are the Lord's heavens, but the earth he has given to the children of man. Okay, so uh, we have a reading, uh, maybe three verses. Okay, so from these three verses, we understand that uh, this is the place, this is the heaven where God and his angels are dwelling. This is the place and this is the, uh, the heaven uh, uh, where the God and his angels are dwelling and it is called the heaven of heavens. So by reading in that way, the heaven of heavens, that means there is one heaven above the other heavens at least there should be two heavens underneath. Then the first one or the third one. Okay, so the heaven is there. Then after that down, when it comes down, there is the second layer of the heaven and the first layer of the heaven. That means the, the, the heaven of heavens are there, is there. And the second, the down, it is there. The immediate atmosphere is this and the outer space is there. So we can understand from this portion that there is a heaven of heavens, okay? Sorgadi sorgam, sorgangalka mireyulla sorgam. So that is what we understand. So the third heaven is beyond the space and the stars. The third heaven is beyond the space and the stars, okay? This heaven is the dwelling place of God, uh, you know, to which Paul, was taken, which is mentioned in 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 2. We already read uh, those verse, verses that 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 2, there Apostle Paul is saying that, okay, uh, uh, once I was, I was taken up to the third heaven. Okay, so these are the biblical explanations of the heaven and the compartments of the uh, heaven uh, we, that we understand from the uh, biblical uh, viewpoint. Okay, so uh, let me uh, remind you one more time, all these things like uh, uh, what we understand from uh, the things that we have learned today. You know, we have been discussing many things uh, in the, in the uh, previous class, especially there are seven judgments of, uh, of uh, uh, the different people, seven judgments are there. Okay, so we have to think about what is the meaning of that. And uh, I mean, uh, what is going to happen for us. So this, this, I mean, uh, evening, we are, we are trying to close our uh, class with uh, this word. I mean, there are many other questions. We will try to clarify those questions, maybe uh, in later, maybe in the, in the upcoming classes. At the same time, before we pray and close our class this evening, let me, let me tell you something. Just close your eyes in the presence of God and think about what we were discussing today, even in the previous class what we were discussing. You know, God has to speak to every person because there is a judgment is coming. God, Jesus Christ is going to judge every person. But think about what is your situation and what is my situation. Every one of us will be standing, uh, I mean, before the judgment seat of Christ. You know, we know that if you are a unbeliever or if you don't believe in Jesus and accepted Jesus as your personal savior, there is no doubt at all, you will stand before the judgment seat of Christ. That is not for giving you the reward, but that is to give you the punishment. But if you are a believer, 
And if you think and if you believe that you are believing in Jesus Christ, and if you think that you are a Christian, a real Christian, or real, you, you are a believer, then that means that God will, you will have to stand before the judgment seat of Jesus Christ. At the same time, God, Jesus is going to reward you the rewards of heaven. I mean, you are going to get the crowns. Okay, so we are waiting for that. We are waiting for that as a believer. Hallelujah. And God is going to judge every person, every person. At the same time, you have to understand that, you know, there are many people, those who are unreached. They are unreached. Okay. Uh, there are many people, I mean, uh, the, the gospel, they, they didn't, I mean, uh, not that heard the gospel of Jesus Christ. Okay. So you were asking a question, will they go to heaven or hell? Okay. But what is our responsibility? In all the ways possible, we can also try to gospelize those people. We know that they are staying or they are living inside the forest or in the interior part of the world. But if possible, if possible, we can do something to reach those people. We can do something to send somebody to those places. I mean, you may not be able to go to that place and share the gospel now, but you can do something. You can give something or you can send somebody to, to do the gospel work in those areas. That is our responsibility. Hallelujah. That is our responsibility. And also we were just discussing about I mean, after our death were a body, a soul and the spirit is going. We should be very, very thorough. We should, we should have a clear, a clear understanding about, I mean, where is my spirit is going after my death? Or where is my spirit is going after my death? Okay, it is sure that our body will be mingled or our body will be returning to the, to the mud, to the crowd at the same time where our soul and the spirit is going. So we have to think about, you know, we have to be in heaven. We have to be in heaven. We are not the people supposed to go to the hell or we are not supposed to go to the different compartments of the hell but take a decision that I will go to heaven and I need to go to heaven. And we have to take a decision that, oh God, I just wanted to know that, oh Lord, what is my situation? Just think about yourself. Think about yourself, okay? So God is there and God is the God of judgment. God is the God of punishment and God is a righteous God. And when we are righteous in the presence of God, when we are sincere in the presence of God, when we are genuine, in the presence of God, just through that, God will take you into heaven. But this is the right time to take a small decision. Oh Lord, I'm submitting myself in the hands of God. If you haven't received Jesus as your personal savior, this is the right time to receive Jesus as your personal savior and try to obey the word of God, the word of God, the laws of God. Hallelujah. Let us pray for all the unreached people and also let us pray for all the people, those who are listening this word, listening this word, hallelujah. And I believe that God is going to do the miracles in the life of, of the people, hallelujah. As we continue the, the, the study of the book of Revelation, I mean, God will move to the people, hallelujah. The God will, I mean, speak to the people. Whenever the people, the other people, the outside people are watching this video, let them also learn about Jesus Christ. Let them hear about Jesus Christ. Let them come to the presence of God in the, in the coming days. Hallelujah. Let us, let us just speak that word that let many people come to Christ. Let many people believe in Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Let us surrender also with the mighty hand of God. Hallelujah. Let us pray together. I request uh, uh, Brother Cedric, can you lead us in prayer now? I mean, as we conclude, uh, I mean, this Bible study today, I mean, I request uh, uh, Brother Cedric, to, to lead us in prayer. I mean, bring all these prayer requests in the mighty hand of God, especially pray for uh, uh, Sister Joby as she, was, as she is traveling to India this evening. Uh, let us pray for her also. And uh, let's pray for all the people, those who are uh, going through the troublesome situation, the, the people, those who are having the difficult situation in their life in different areas. Let's pray for them also. Pray for the Sunday service and the guest speaker. And let us all, I mean, close our eyes in the presence of God and let us pray. I request uh, uh, Brother Cedric to lead us in prayer.